Hallelujah. Praise God. Y'all already know. We're back in and we're back at it. Hallelujah. Technical difficulties, but we are back at it. Hallelujah. So we just want to give you a moment to come on back in. Come on back. Come on back. Hallelujah. Um, this happens from time to time. Hallelujah. But we thank you for your faithfulness to come on back in. We just want to, we got to start praising God a cappella up in here. Hallelujah. I'm going to uh, have to give y'all some of what I got in this vocal ability. Hallelujah. I don't know if y'all want that, um, but it's going to happen. Praise God. So again, we welcome you. Abiding Word Prophetic Ministries. We are back. Like I said, slight little technical difficulties, um, but we're back at it. Hallelujah. He's still a good, good father. He is a good, good, wonderful, worthy father. Hallelujah. We praise him. We praise him. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you this morning. We praise you. We give you thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. We'll definitely keep that in mind, Sister Vanessa. Amen. It's a good idea. <clears throat> Amen. So we're back in. We're five strong already. Look, we're going to try this next song. And um, we will see how it goes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, you already know. So one more song of worship. How the Lord covered us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see how this goes. Thank you, Jesus. And y'all didn't know if anything happened, you just come right on back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't want to sing the latest song. Thank y'all for coming right back. I don't want to percolate the ground. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to make you smile. I don't care who thinks I'm right or wrong. Hallelujah, Lord. I don't care who tries to calm me down. I just want to raise you. Thank you, Jesus. You God bless you, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to try to be quiet and just let the words minister. We want you to get this in your spirit. You gave me another chance. You saw my needs. Others saw my thoughts. Thank you, Father. You forgive. I don't have to listen for my name. They don't have to walk me down the aisle. I just wanna make you proud. Should I make the Hall of Fame? Oh, they say we're special seats. I just hope that you'll be pleased. You cover me in the midst of it all. You love me, gave me another chance. You rescued me. I was going to fall, going to fall. You say, so in my life, we glorify, we glorify, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father. You get the glory. You give the glory, Father. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, Jesus. You get the glory. Take all of the 
Father, you get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say, I just want to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just bless you. We give you thanksgiving. We give you praise, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you the fruit of our lips today. We just thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your tenderness, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your great, 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 great mercy. Great is your mercy. And Father, we just lift you up today. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you. We give you thanksgiving, God Almighty. We just thank you for allowing us to be in your presence yet another time. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Father. Thank you for giving us strength in our bodies, light in our eyes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for a brand new day. Thank you for another chance. Thank you for another chance. And we just bless you today, Lord. And we want to make the most of it. We want to make good on it, Heavenly Father. We pray this morning, Father, that you would just move by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Meet us, Heavenly Father, right where we need to be met in the name of Jesus. Let yokes be destroyed. Let shackles be destroyed. Deliverance, send forth deliverance. Let everything wicked, dark, foul, and evil, everything assailing and harassing and attacking and causing problems in the lives of your people, let there be destruction of every demonic stronghold. Let a powerful anointing rest and flow upon this service. Let your voice be heard, Father, in the name of Jesus. Grant us unity. Let there be blessing. Let the blessing of the Lord rest and settle upon this service, Father. Minister to our hearts. Help us to draw nearer. Cause us to hear the voice of God today. Cause us to feel your tender touch. Cause us to know that our creator, our savior, our father, love is speaking to us today. We, we need you today, Father, and we're not ashamed to admit it. So we just ask you to move mightily by your spirit. Let darkness be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, turn the tide today. Cause us to go free. Cause the captives to go free. Any bondages of any kind. Let them be destroyed. Let there be unity. Let there be togetherness. Let there be a coming together today, Father. We just love you and we need you, Lord. We need you today. And we pray that you would have your way, Lord. We turn this service over to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And if you agree and believe it and receive it, somebody just say amen. <clears throat> You're adding your agreement, excuse me. <clears throat> You're adding your agreement in 
Jesus' name this morning. Hallelujah. Again, we welcome you to Abiding Word Prophetic Ministries. We're based here out of the great state of Texas, K-Town. Colleen Fort Hood in the building. Hallelujah. We welcome you. I'm Pastor Marcus. Hallelujah. Lead pastor of Abiding Word. My co-pilot, the lovely, the beautiful prophetess who's normally here with me, my co-pastor. She's a man in the controls. Hallelujah. Um, recovering a little bit, but we wanted to be able to hear off camera how things sound. We got to do those tweaks and those adjustments to give you, hallelujah, the best experience that we can give you. Praise God. We want it to sound good and be good. Hallelujah. We, you know, been hearing some stuff about, you know, the music and, you know, we maximize. We do the best we can with what we have. We show ourselves faithful here as our faithful Lord will move and progress us upward and onward. So again, uh, our family, AWPM family, you know, we love you so much. Family, friends and partners, we thank you for joining us this morning. Hallelujah. We pray. We pray. You are blessed. It's all about Jesus. You already know. That's why we're here. You didn't come uh, to see my shirt. Hallelujah. And to see the glare on these glasses. We came for Jesus Christ this morning. And he has promised us, he's promised us that where two or three would gather in his name, that he would be here in our midst. Hallelujah. He is here among us, church, the mighty one. Hallelujah. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is here with us this morning. And we're going to bless him and we're going to hear and we're going to be heard. And it's going to be a wonderful time. Do invite someone for service this morning. If you haven't already, a lot of you have already been sharing. We thank you for that. We want you to get your Bible. We want you to get your notebook. Lock in. Don't just tick it off. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to come to church. It's a better thing. Hallelujah. To receive when you uh, are in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Again, just a quick, a uh, few quick announcements. We're going to run through and we've got the word of the Lord for you this morning. If you haven't already, please do check us out. We are on the World Wide Web. It's right there on the screen, www.awpm.org. You can get a little bit more about the mission and the vision of this ministry. Hallelujah. The five E's, our, our mission. Some of you don't know, hadn't seen it. The five E's. Hallelujah. You can check that out. What's that all about? The mission and the vision of this ministry. Check it out. Doing some updates. So um, if you get a minute, go by the website. Check us out and see what we got going on. Hallelujah. <clears throat> excuse me, our ministry email. You can send your prayer requests. We believe in prayer, especially over this time. It's a good time to do it now. We're still in the 21 days of prayer and fasting, and we are in the home stretch. Hallelujah. The finish line is right there in view. The steakhouse, the burger, the fries, the chips, the cookie is right up the street. Hallelujah. But send those prayer requests. AWPMIN21 at gmail.com. Of course, we believe in discreetness, um, so your business ain't going to be all out there, but we just would like to be able to agree with you in prayer, send you some scripture, and receive, help you receive your breakthrough, get what God has for you in Jesus' mighty name. You can send that to us at any time. Uh, we will uh, try our best to be diligent to respond back in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you too. Every one of our ministry, uh, every one of our messages, rather, by the grace of God, has been archived. Go to the YouTube. If you're not subscribed already, it would greatly help us and bless us. If you would just go to the channel, click subscribe. Hallelujah. Hit the bell and you can get notified whenever we upload something new. But hallelujah, we always say just go back through. Check out some of those messages. Glean. Get what you can while you're working out, while you're on that commute to work. While you're, you know, cutting the grass, doing dishes, whatever, hallelujah, let that word come through. Uh, our kids sleep with it sometimes, you know, have us, you know, playing in the atmosphere. And that's OK, too. Hallelujah. But go to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. And again, just check through some of those archive messages. First Lady has taught some powerful, powerful messages. That Boundary Series always comes back. Hallelujah. We're talking about being coming out of the wilderness. And um, just there, there's some wonderful things on there. So if you get some time, please do check us out. YouTube, we are there under the ministry name, Abiding Word Prophetic Ministries. Amen. And give it, hallelujah, to all of our faithful partners and friends. We want to thank you for your financial support. We're giving on the cash app, hallelujah. 
That's dollar sign A W P M. Hallelujah. Members, members, my people. At this time, hallelujah, we want you to just continue on. Hallelujah. Get those tithes in. Get those offerings in. Hallelujah. Me and the first lady have been scouting the land. We've been looking around. Hallelujah. So we can get into Canaan, secure a building. But it's going to take all of us to come on board. It's a group effort. It's a family affair. Hallelujah. So get those tithes in. Get those offerings in. Hallelujah. We got our eyes on some things and we're going to pursue and we're going to overtake. But again, it takes a collective effort. Everyone on board. Hallelujah. Everybody doing what we can do so we can get what God has for us to give. And again, we do sincerely. We thank you for each and every time. Those gifts of love, those offerings, those seeds were able to be a blessing to the community. Just this past uh, Thanksgiving, some of you uh, were able to see what we were able to do as a ministry. And we want to do more. We want to do more. It's our first year. We haven't even hit a year yet in ministry. Hallelujah. But we've been able to do some things. Uh, we're looking to expand. We're looking to grow. We're looking to increase. We're looking to ramp things up. Hallelujah. So do continue your faithful giving. Hallelujah. Dollar sign, A-W-P-M. Those who aren't members of the ministry, we thank you for your seeds. We do have people who give and sow into the ministry and we look to, you know, give it back out. You know, it's currency. It's flowing. It comes in and it goes out. It comes in and it goes out. Hallelujah. The members will be getting with you more about the vision. Hallelujah, what we are looking to do so we can gather together as a corporate body. Praise God. We're looking forward to it. Dollar sign AWPM, nothing too big, nothing too small. You can give at any point during the service. Hallelujah. And we pray and know that God will bless you for doing it. Now, this is it. This is it. You already know your first lady doing this. She in the back doing this. Hallelujah. Telling you, get in here. Come on in this church. The church is growing. The membership is growing. Hallelujah. God is adding to the church daily. Hallelujah. And we want you to be a part. It's a family. Hallelujah. There are no perfect pastors. There are no perfect people. Hallelujah. We've been called by God to help facilitate. The Bible says pastors, the fivefold ministry is here to equip the saints. Hallelujah. We're here for you. We're here to help teach you and train you and grow you so you can get what God has for you to get. So you can get what God has for you, your purpose, your destiny, your call, your assignment, individually, which is collectively tied, we know, to the whole body of Christ. But hallelujah, you need you need a shepherd, you need a pastor, you need some folk where there's some spiritual accountability. Hallelujah, some people who can look out for you and ain't, you know, trying to holler at you on the side and have their hand in your pocket, doing nothing underhanded and shady. We ain't about that life. Hallelujah. We want God to get the glory and we want you to make it to heaven <laughs> and maximize and fulfill your purpose. So hallelujah. Pray about joining this ministry. It is a, it's, it's a decision. There's accountability that comes. If you remember, hallelujah, there's, there's benefits and there's blessings, but there are also responsibilities. We don't run from that. Hallelujah. But we've uh, vowed and pledged to God to do our best here to raise you up in Jesus' name. So pray about it. Pray about partnering and becoming an AWPMite. Just made it up. Hallelujah. Right there. But pray about joining. And to all of our partners and friends, we do love you again. We got some things on the horizon. We are expanding and we are growing. Hallelujah. Ever, the plan of God is ever unfolding. So pray about joining and get in this house and come on in. Amen. Come on. Now I'm ready. I am ready. We're starting. I don't know if it's going to be a series. Y'all know we're in the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. And it's been real. I done lost a little weight. Hallelujah. My pants, these pants was, was digging into a brother hard at first. I done lost, you know, some weight, lost some inches, lost some pounds. Hallelujah. I feel good in my body. I feel good in my spirit. Hallelujah. And we're progressing on. And we don't want you to be discouraged. Hallelujah. This last week, jump on. Jump on board. Recommit. Rededicate. You know, sometimes when you're doing it, it can get a little dry. It can get a little stale in the middle. It's hard. And, you know, we dealt with a little sickness. Uh, and it ain't coming back in Jesus' name. But it's from now. where well, we started on the 17th. But you can recommit from now till next Sunday. 
next Sunday, February 6th, which is First Lady's birthday. I'll just to throw that out there. Praise God. It is uh, co-pastor's birthday, 2-6. Hallelujah. February 6th. That's when we'll be ending our fast. And we want to finish strong. So again, don't be discouraged. Don't be frustrated. You can recommit. You can recommit today and you can finish strong. It's not how you, how you start, but it's how you finish. So don't be discouraged. Don't be frustrated. Hallelujah. Just look to meet that time. And again, we were doing the Daniel. That's where we were cutting out the meats, the breads, the sweets, the dairy, the cheese, all of that. Hallelujah. Mainly focus on water, 100% fruit juice, and those, you know, uh, fruits and vegetables and just those um, non-meat, non-fried items. Hallelujah. And it's been a blessing. I hadn't really dealt with too many cravings. I got a couple of things I'm going to get back to. But uh, we've been focused. We've been focused. So hallelujah. We're going to finish strong in Jesus' name. Jump on board. Now, we feel good about it. We're in a time of what? Fasting and prayer. We're in a time of consecration. This has been a time of rededication, recommitment, refocusing, revamping, you know, getting revitalized. The Lord setting us. And we know sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, the benefits of fasting are seen later. So don't get discouraged like, oh, it's nothing happening now. Nothing's happening. I'm just hungry and I'm weak. Well, <laughs> the benefits are going to come later. February, you know, March, April, May, June, July. God keeps a good set of books and God keeps tabs and in inventory. And what we do now, praise God, will bless us at a later time. It's just like he talked about the ant working. Hallelujah. And storing up for the summer months, for the winter months. Hallelujah. You do it now. You store it up. And then there'll come a time where you can pull on it, when you can draw on it. Hallelujah. And it will happen for you. So uh, in that time of fasting, but prayer, because you've got a couple prayer with fasting. Hallelujah. So very simply, we're going into the prayer series. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about prayer this morning. So um, subject title and subject matter for today is prayer. It's prayer. We are in the prayer series. Hallelujah. The prayer series part one. Some of our theme scriptures for this morning, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter six. Thank you, Jesus. I feel him already. Matthew chapter six, verses five through eight. There it is. It's prayer. Prayer. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's right there. Uh, the ticker's going on the bottom of the screen. Hallelujah. We believe in teaching the word. Uh, we want you to get it. And all you're getting, get an understanding. Hallelujah. So if you can, while it's there on the screen, just make reference of some of those scriptures and you'll be able to go back um, and chew and glean and feed. But um, right off, we're going into Matthew chapter 6 verses five through eight. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter six, verses five through eight. And we read, hallelujah. Come on here. Also, this is Jesus talking now. It's in red. You got to pay attention. Also, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Come on now. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets. Here it is, that they may be seen by people. Uh-oh. Truly I tell you, they have their reward in full already. Jesus is already putting out, talking about prayer and reward. Jesus is saying this now. We're in verse six. But when you pray, come on, who? When you pray, Go into your most private room and closing the door, pray to your father, hallelujah, who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. Verse seven, and when you pray, do not heap up phrases, that is, multiply words. Repeating the same ones over and over. Jesus, give me a biscuit. Jesus, give me a biscuit. Jesus, give me a biscuit. 
Jesus, give me a biscuit. He said, don't do that. Hallelujah. Don't repeat the same words over and over as the Gentiles do. For they think, hallelujah, they think they will be heard for their much speaking. But here it is. Here's the bedrock. Verse 8. Do not be like them. For your father, thank you, Jesus, your father knows what you need even before you ask him. Come on. The Lord's already moving. Quick word of prayer. We're already in. Father, we just thank you for today. We ask you to give us clarity, wisdom, insight, and understanding. Clear up, Heavenly Father, misconception and deception and misunderstanding, darkness, haze, clouds, confusion, anxiety. Release us from it all. Minister to us in a clear way. Cause us to see and know what you have to say, how you want us to be in prayer, communion, and fellowship with you. You sent Jesus to clear things up. So we ask you, Father, give us eyes, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive. You're the simple truth. Hallelujah. The simple and powerful truths of your word. Speak to us today, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody. If you're in church, hallelujah, you ought to have your Bible. You ought to have your notebook and take you some notes. Get some out of it. Don't just come. You don't want it to be just, you know, focus in as much as you can. Hallelujah. If you know it's coming, there's not, you know, time to be trying to cut the grass and, you know, let all that wait for a minute so you can focus, so you can get what you need. We ain't got time to be playing and going through the motions. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't got time, ain't going to make time. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, I want to hear from you. And First Lady can help me out. I want to know from you guys, what comes to mind? Hallelujah. Woman of God, Sister Hillary. God bless your auntie in the building. My, my, my. God bless you, ma'am. Good morning. Greetings in Jesus' name. Now, I want to hear from you all. What comes to mind when you hear the word prayer? What are some things that we, we're interacting now? Sister Makisha, good morning. Praise God. God bless you, ma'am. What are some things that come to mind when you hear the word prayer? When you hear prayer, what comes to mind? Now, y'all interact with me now. Come on. Yes, ma'am. The woman of God said communication with God. Absolutely. You in my message. What else? Who else? What comes to mind when you hear the word prayer? Conversing with God? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Y'all smart this morning. Y'all ain't teaching my message. I'm preaching this morning. Come on here. Intimacy. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. We got a good group today. When you hear the word prayer, you know, what comes to mind? What feelings come to mind? When you hear prayer, we got communication. Absolutely. Conversation, conversing, yes, yes, yes. Intimacy, 1,000%. Hallelujah, I should have called y'all when I was preparing because this is it. Hallelujah. Also, I want to know from you guys, what does it mean to have a prayer life? What does having a prayer life mean? What, what does that mean? One-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. Yes, ma'am. It does involve surrender. Y'all are all on point. Having a prayer life. <clears throat> because this isn't just, you know, Christian jargon and Christian talking. You know, this stuff gets thrown around. But, you know, do you have a prayer life? And my prayer life, and your prayer life. But what is a prayer life? What, what, what does that exactly mean? Hallelujah. And how would you say, yes, sir, a request for help? Absolutely. How would you say your prayer life is? If someone was to ask you, hey, how's your prayer life? How would you say your prayer life is? Hallelujah. Is it strong? Is it weak? Could be better. I mean, it's just there. How's your prayer life? Hallelujah. How's your prayer life? A relationship with our Father. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Glory, glory, glory. How's your prayer life? Checking up on you, checking your spiritual temperature. Hallelujah. Is it weak? Is it strong? Also, is prayer, now these are just some thoughts for you now. 
to to throw in the throw in the machine of the mind. Hallelujah! Get that moving around in there. Is prayer something you resort to only when you're in trouble? Is it? Oh God, I'm in trouble. I need to pray. Something has happened. I need to go in prayer. I need to go pray. I just got some bad news. This just happened. They just made me mad. I'm about to go snap off. Lord Jesus, I need to go pray. Is prayer, hallelujah, something that you do only in the bad times? Hallelujah, because your view and your perception of prayer is important. Hallelujah. Amen. Is prayer something we just resort to when we're in trouble? Is prayer just for troubled times? Prayer. I'm in trouble. I need to go pray. My mama's in trouble. I need to go pray. Do we pray when we're happy? Is it, oh, thank you, gee, I'm happy. I need to go pray. I'm excited. I need to go pray. We don't necessarily normally always do that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, have you been just tolerating God for the sake of getting blessed and not going to hell? We, we, we got to dig into some things now. We got to dig into it because there's a lot of misconception. There's a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot. There's prayer conferences and prayer books. And you, we understand things have their place. But you know, in this ministry, we seek to keep it real, relatable. Hallelujah. And, and in a practical way, we want you to be able to get an understanding. Hallelujah, because some people have some thoughts and feelings about prayer where they feel like, oh, I'm not a prayer warrior. My, my prayers are weak. My prayers are strong. I just, you know, I struggle in my prayer life. Come on, we can be honest. We can be honest. We, I, I struggle in my prayer life. I don't really like praying too much. Or, you know, I can pray, I can pray, I can pray, I can pray, but we come away, there's not that note of victory. There's not that, well, are we praying in faith? Are we just pouring out? Are we just supplicating? Hallelujah. Are we coming into prayer frustrated and upset? And now we're coming away. I mean, we've emotionally poured out, but have we received in our spirit the answers? Hallelujah. So we want to talk about this morning because there are times, now look, our relationship with God, this is a key here, our relationship with God should absolutely affect our relationship with people. Hallelujah. Our relationship with him should, should affect our relationship with those around us. Bible said, if you don't love God, if you don't love people whom you can't see, how can you love God whom you can't see? It's the love of God. We cannot say we love God and we're mean, evil, wicked. You know, we treat people, you know, like they're nothing. Like they have no consequence, like they're just, you know, disposable and they ain't about nothing. And like they're just fixtures and objects. Hallelujah. Our relationship with God should affect our relationship with people. But there have been times when we've allowed people now to affect our relationship with God. We cannot allow our relationships out here to cloud us up to where we're thinking God's not good. God's not loving. Hallelujah. We're allowing our external relationships to affect how we feel and relate to God. Hallelujah. What is prayer? What is prayer? Now we've given some definite. All of you are on point. All of you are on point. At its core, at the core, come on. Prayer is communication with God. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're taking it simple. We're taking an elementary. We want to get an understanding. It's not always the most deep and most elaborate. We know in the Bible, the Pharisees were condemned. They would have been the prayer warriors of the day. They knew the word. They knew the scripture, but their heart wasn't there. Hallelujah. Prayer is communication with God. Listen, effective and sincere communication. Hallelujah. It's the way we communicate. It's our communication point with God Almighty. What is so communication? What is communication? It's the successful sharing 
or conveying of ideas and feelings. We're going to see a common theme here, a common theme. Hallelujah. Jesus taught and retaught some things. Jesus kept things simple. Hallelujah. So hopefully this isn't too elementary for you because we've got to get this. God's got something to say. Hallelujah. Listen, communication, the successful sharing or conveying of ideas and feelings. When you are in prayer, your prayer life, your prayer time is the sharing and the conveying of ideas and feelings. Hallelujah. Come on. The root word of that communion, excuse me, communication, communication, it's communication with God. That root word is to commune, commune, having communion, glory to God. This is about communing with God. This is about communication, communion. What is communion? Again, we saw communication was the sharing. Communion is the sharing or exchanging, come on, of intimate thoughts and feelings. The sharing. This is sharing ground in the confines of a relationship with God. We're in communion with him. This is what this is all about. This is what you got to know. Hallelujah. The sharing, <clears throat> excuse me, or exchanging of intimate thoughts, intimate now, and feelings, especially when the exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. Come on, get that down. We're going somewhere. We're building foundation. We need you to get this because Jesus loves you. He desires you. You were created for this. You were created for this. You're not just you. Hallelujah. People can cast us off and people can, can, can exclude us from the crowd. We ain't, we don't, we ain't, we don't weigh the right, weigh the right amount. We don't look the way, you know, they want us to look not tall enough, not short enough, not talented enough, not, not, no loud enough, not, you know, you don't have this outward ability. Hallelujah. People will make you feel undesirable. Dealing with rejection, dealing with the world, dealing with society and media. And you, you know, you don't have what they say you should have. You got to know this is the place. Hallelujah. God is the place for you. This place of communion, this place of sharing, this place of intimacy, as the woman of God said. Prayer, listen, prayer, this sharing, this exchange, hallelujah, of intimate thoughts and intimate feelings. This place of prayer should be an outgrowth of our relationship with God. This is what God wants you to know and what God wants to drive home to you today. Prayer is about relationship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer is all about relationship. Relationship with God. Loving relationship with God, loving relationship with God, there it is, is the bedrock and foundation of our prayer life. So when we talk about having a prayer life, when we're talking about praying, that's not just going off and going off, you know, for an hour, going off to go off. And we're praying in tongues and we're sweating and we fight. I understand those things have their place. But this prayer life, your time of prayer, it's about intimacy. It, it is an outgrowth of your relationship. The Pharisees prayed. We see in the Bible here when he talked about those who are praying, vain repetition. They can pray long. They can pray strong. There's no intimacy. There's no connection. There's no fellowship. There's no relationship. We're not babbling on and on and on and on and on. It's like, good God, man. Relationship. This is what prayer is about. Whenever you think prayer, think relationship. Hallelujah. You can't separate the two. Prayer is about fellowship. Hallelujah. Prayer is about fellowship. Fellowship is friendly relationship. This is what prayer is about. 
This is the core. Now, we understand there are different kinds of prayer. We're not talking about the kinds of prayer yet. We're talking about the core of it, the essence of it, what it's all really about. Because you don't want to be fighting, warring, and winning, and you can be empty on the inside. There's no connection. There's no real fellowship. There's no real communion. Hallelujah. With God. Friendly association. Especially with someone who share the same interests. So this is not, you know, friendship. It is friendship. Hallelujah. We, we, we God is into you. We can say it like that. It said it's one who shares the same interests. God is interested in you. This is why God is the, is the place where we got to be. Because this world can be cruel and the world can be cold and there's misunderstandings and all this and all that. And we can go through emptiness and we can go through rejection. And we can go through all of those things. God is interested in you. God is into you. You're not as bad and evil and wicked and cynical as people may paint you out to be. God is in me. God is interested in your life. God has a vested interest in you. You. Huh? Don't make me say it. Feel every piece of this out there. Hmm? Come on here. God is interested in you. Psalm 37 and 23 says this. The Lord, Psalm 37, 23, reference it. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Who glory. Come on. He delights it in every detail. The details of your life. The details is what make a difference. Hallelujah. We got, we got some workers and some artisans and anything you put your hand to, you know, excellence is in the details. Hallelujah. It's the details. It's the attention to detail. Hallelujah. And God has a vested interest in your life and he cares about the details of your life. It's not just the bare necessities, food, water, and shelter. And that's all you get. Uh-uh. The details the intricacies of your life. He's interested in you. He is into you. Hallelujah. Listen, prayer and relationship are inseparable. We said we're just laying some foundation. Prayer. So when we talk about prayer, there's all kinds of thoughts and feelings about prayer and people feel inadequate. We can, you know, we're not to compare ourselves to the prayer warriors, to those who seem, you know, bigger and better and badder. This is this is about relationship. This is about intimacy. Hallelujah. Prayer and relationship always think synonymous. Prayer and relationship, everything that 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 comes out. You know, we understand prayers of petition. We understand prayers of declaration. We understand prayers of command. We get it. It's there and it's scriptural. But at the bedrock, at the heart, it is, it's all got to be done within the confines of a relationship with God. Hallelujah. And prayer, communication, communing, exchanging, sharing is all about relationship. This is what it's about. They're saying, I can go off and all is wonderful. And you can stomp and run and all, but when you come back, when you come down, when your head stop hurting, and when you done threw up because you done went so hard. Come on, is there a relationship? We don't want that stuff to be external. This is what Jesus was talking about when he talked about in Matthew, we're not doing these things for external show. Listen, effective communication. Effective communication is absolutely critical. You know this. Come on here. To the life, growth, and health of any relationship. Any relationship that breaks down in communication, where the communication is broken down, that relationship is on its way down. There's got to be communication. There's got to be a sharing. There's got to be, I don't care whatever the level of relationship is, husband, wife, children, you know, to parents, friends, peers, uh, co-workers, 
If it's just, there's got to be communication. And this is why we said effective communication. Hallelujah. Conversation. Prayer is conversation with God. Some of you had already said it, but we got to get that this is within the confines of relationship. Relationship. You're not just saying stuff. You're not just talking into the air. There's a relationship here. There's a relationship here. There's a love relationship in this. Hallelujah. Communication necessitates conversation. Conversation. We got to talk. Because you can be in a relationship, but your relationship's not strong. You're not really tight. This is how you, you can be closer with, you know, somebody who's not blood than, some, you know, somebody who's not, you know, in the family, weren't born, you know, you weren't born in the same house. But there's conversation. We talk. We converse. We share. We commune. There's relationship. There's friendship. This is how relationships are built, formed and strengthened. There's got to be a sharing. That's why we talked about like interests. This is how we get to know what we have in common. I've got to talk to you. Come on. What do we have in common? You get to talking to some folk and it's like, no, they I ain't fooling with them. They out of control. I, I can't fool with them like that. Why? This conversation, this communion, what you're sharing with me <laughs> and what you're communicating with me, hallelujah, is telling me I can't really fool with you like that. Now, I love you, but we can't really be in a what? Relationship like that. Come on here. Listen, conversation, conversing, conversation is a two-way street. Come on, somebody. It's two ways. We got some talkers. Glory to God. You ever been talking to somebody and they dominate? They hashtag dominating the conversation. You can't get a word in. You can't get nothing in. It's two way. It's like, dude, come on, man. I I'm listening, but, you know, I done forgot 10, 12 thoughts. I had some good point. I can't get nothing out. You doing all the talking. You dominating. Stop. Come on here. What type of relationship are we going to have when you do all the talking? All the talking. Two way. What we say? It's a dialogue, not a monologue. Because if you're telling me, hey, you know, me and this person had a conversation. But you never get to talk. You, you never get to talk. Or, watch this, you never let that person talk. What kind of conversation is this? Yeah, there it is. Reciprocate. Reciprocity. You talk, I talk. You share, I share. Come on here. <clears throat> this is all about closeness with God. This is about closeness. This is about intimacy with God. It's a living, intimate relationship. Prayer is just a natural outflow. When you're in relationship with somebody, when you love somebody, when you're interested in somebody, talking comes forth. Sharing comes forth. Hallelujah. You feel safe. You know, there's that place of safety. Okay, I feel safe to share this with you. I don't, you know, some of you have that spirit on you or you have just that way about you, very comforting to where you have people just come tell you stuff like, man, you know, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but da, 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 da. people need to converse. People need to release. People need to get things out. And you're wondering like, damn, man, every time I go somewhere, it's like people just, they're drawn, they gravitate. It's the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Because there's got to be a safe place and a safe ground for you to talk, for you to communicate in the confines of our relationship with God. This is the place of exchange. Exchange takes place in communion, in conversation, in relationship. We already said relationship is the legal ground for exchange. That's why you have to be careful who you're in relationship with because it's the ordained place. If you're in relationship, you cannot avoid impartation. You can't avoid it. If you stay in fellowship with somebody, if you stay in relationship with somebody, that's why you started, you know, saying some of their catchphrases and their taglines. I had a partner, I had a friend back in high school uh, from New York, Staten Island, New York. Now I'm from Houston. I'm from Texas. Hallelujah. I ain't never come talking about some yo in my life, but we were in relationship. We were in fellowship. 
he's always saying, what you think I should start saying? I have to catch myself, like, oh, we talking about yo, people who say bro all the time. Or whatever their tagline, whatever it is that they say all the time. Come on, come on, what, whatever it is, you can adopt that. Why? Because there's relationship, there's community. This is a legal ground. This is the legal means of exchange and impartation. Impartation takes place by relationship. Things are caught. It's that's that God ordained ground. Hallelujah. That's why he brings you into the company of some people. He brings you around some people when he wants to impart some things into you. Now, there's levels of relationship. Hallelujah. We know there's levels of relationship in our lives. You know, uh, even in Jesus' life, they talked about, you know, John reclining on his bosom. Then he had Peter, James, and John. Then he had the 12. Then he had the 70. You know, you have those who are very close, very intimate. Hallelujah. That's how we want to be with God. But that's the place of legal exchange. That's the place of impartation with God in prayer, in communion. So we're changing how we're thinking about prayer because this is a living communion. We're in constant communion and fellowship. We don't want to have it in our mind. Sometimes it's just a mental thing. Okay, I'm going to pray. Now there's those times, hallelujah, but it's not always you have to go off to pray. You have to go off to, you know, I, I, well, I can't really pray or there's, there's no, you know, development yet that God is speaking to you right there, right then and there. You don't have to go to the, to the closet. You don't have to necessarily go to the mountain or wait two weeks or wait a couple months for you can get to the prayer mountain for you can hear from God and commune. No, it's a living communion. It's a living fellowship. Now, again, I understand those things have their place. Sometimes you're doing that to focus more. But we got to get to the place where it's a living communion. It's a living fellowship. Listen, intimacy fosters faith and trust. Intimacy. Hallelujah. So me and First Lady were talking. That's like, you know, somebody who wants to talk to the boss of the company. You know, you might have a need or you got some of ideas like, man, you know, I talked to the boss once about six years ago. I haven't seen him since. And, you know, I haven't, you know, had any communication, communication. Hallelujah. But I got this thing and the other person, there's confidence. Oh, yeah, I talk to the boss all the time. Yeah, I just got to phone with him like 30 minutes ago. Who do you think is going to have more confidence? Who do you think is going to have more trust? The one who's in constant communion, that closeness, that proximity. Hallelujah. This is why we want to be in constant communion with God, constant fellowship. It's a growth. It's a process. It's developing. Hallelujah. Listen, we were created to genuinely commune. We were created to commune. We were created for relationship. We were created for fellowship. Bible says in Genesis chapter one, and I'm just a few more minutes, y'all. I know we got to run. Genesis chapter one. Or is it two? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen, it made the trees grow. God is good. Genesis chapter, chapter 1, verse 27. Hallelujah. So God created, well, let's do 26. 26. We were created to commune. This is the creation of humanity. This is the creation of human beings, males, and females. Hallelujah. Genesis 1 and 26. Then God said, let us make man. Let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, to be like us. He says they're going to reign over the fish of the sea, birds in the sky, livestock, all the wild animals. Verse 27. Now, no one made God do this. The Bible says the Lord does what pleases him. No one, no one forced God. You're going to make human beings. No, no, no. The Bible says he does what pleases him of his own good pleasure because he is love and love is expressed. You know, love has to be expressed. Love is best expressed in the confines of a relationship. Hallelujah. 
So God, verse 27, created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then he blessed them. But you were created by God for communion. You were brought forth in his very image. He made you like himself. He made you to be like him so you could commune with him. God doesn't commune with animals like that. Hallelujah. He communes. He has a level of communion with the angels. But we're the ones. We're the ones who, he, who Bible says, he crowned with a crown of creation. We're the ones he died to redeem. We are the sons and daughters of God. We're the ones who commune. You were created to commune with him. You were brought forth for this relationship. And this is what prayer is all about. So again, to, to demystify that it's not just for the deep. It's not just for the religious. It's not just, no, no, no. Prayer is, is for relationship. It's for those who are in relationship with God, for those who want to be in relationship. Listen, now we'll go into two quick things. What prayer is not. <laughs> now we got what prayer is. What prayer is not. Jesus had to come tear some stuff down because anytime he let man get a hold of stuff and he want to take it and make it where he want to make it, Stuff gets messed up, muddied up, clouded. This is why the Pharisees got condemned and they were angry because they got a hold to the law and they started adding their stuff to it. And Jesus condemned them. He said, you're adding all this stuff in. You says you're teaching as, as commandments of God, the traditions of men. You're putting all this stuff in and acting like God is saying it. No, 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 no. Core, bedrock. Prayer, communication, conversation, relationship. I'm talking about, you know, you're some prayer warrior, but there's no real relationship. This is what God is after. He's not after who knows the most scripture, who can quote the most scripture, who can be the most deep and wonderful. This is what we're seeing here. What prayer is not, number one, from Matthew 6 and 5. Prayer is not, come on the time or place to show off how deep, wonderful, and spiritual we are. Come on here. <laughs> we got it on the screen. Prayer is not a time for you to show. It's not dressed to impress. It's not, yeah, I'm going to wow. I'm going to study the word, you know what I'm saying? Run off these 10 scriptures right quick. No, no. It's not the time to show how much scripture you've memorized. It's not a show of your spirituality. This is not showtime. This ain't showtime at the Apollo. It's showtime down at the altar. Come on. It's not showtime at the Apollo. It's not showtime down at the altar. It's not about, uh-oh, okay. This is not for you to try to impress anyone. Matthew 6 and 5, he said, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the streets, on the corners of the streets. Here it is, where they may be seen by people. This is not, you know, trying to make a show and all, you know, come on now. Now that stuff. If it's genuine, is one thing, but he condemned those who are doing it to make a show, to impress. Hallelujah. Show how deep and wonderful and spiritual that they are. Not showtime. You say showtime. Hallelujah. It is not Matthew 6 5 for show. Next, number two, it is not. It is not. The repeating of words again and again. Jesus is the one. Now, nobody made him say this, but he's the one who's talking about prayer and reward. Jesus is the rabbi. Jesus is the teacher. He's the one who talks about prayer and reward. Hallelujah. So it's not just repetition. If we don't have some knowledge, if we don't have some understanding, hallelujah, if you're in relationship with somebody, Hallelujah. It's not just, 
Yeah, no. Give me, 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 give me. Come on here. It's not the repeating of words over and over again and again and again. Come on. We're not chanting. We're not trying to wear God out. God, I'm going to wear you out. I'm going to weigh down heaven. I'm going to bring this before your mom. I'm going to wear you down. I'm going to wear you down, Jesus. No, no. Or to weigh down heaven. No, no. It's not how many times or how loud and intense you can get that will make God respond. Some of you know the story in the Old Testament of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. There was a showdown. Hallelujah. All these prophets of Baal, you know, God was showing who's the true and living God. So there's a showdown. And now, you know, they're going to see whose God is really God. Is it the God of Elijah or is it Baal, their God, who they're faithfully serving? The Bible says they, they came to that place and it was time. He says, okay, the real God can speak. The real God answers. Come on. The real God communicates. There's communication back. And we're talking about effective. We're not talking about evil, demonic communication. We're talking about, you know, this communication. So they began to cut themselves and wail and loud and make all kinds of show. I'm talking about cutting themselves to the blood, skeeting. No answer. You're doing all of this. You're not going to make the God of heaven respond. You, you, you don't twist God's arm. You, you don't force his hand. So again, it's not, this isn't chanting and you're getting in a certain position. And I'm blessed, 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 I'm blessed. What are you doing? It's not how loud, it's not how intense that's going to make God respond. That's not how it works. Hallelujah. So that's what prayer is not. Prayer is not that. Where is prayer? We said it's communion. It's fellowship. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to be a disciplined preacher and stop right there. Hallelujah. So we can pick this up on Wednesday. We can pick this up on Wednesday. But again, this is bedrock. This is foundation. Jesus wants to answer your prayer. God wants to answer you. He said when you pray. When you pray, hallelujah, he's the one again who's talking about prayer and reward. We're not going to know unless God reveals divinely and sovereignly. I ain't got time to be wasting in the prayer closet, doing all this, running, shouting, climbing the fence, stomping the walls down, running around the neighborhood, Jericho. It's, if it's not going to be effective, this is what we talk about, effective communication. But we can be deceived because I bet you the Pharisees thought they were doing something. This is why Jesus came to give insight. He came to give revelation. The Pharisees thought they was doing it. They thought they were really getting it in. He says, hey, look, let me give you some inside information. They're doing all of this to be seen. They may look impressive, but they're not having any effect. We're talking about effective prayer. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer, come on, of the righteous avails much effect in prayer. Come on here. Results in prayer, not praying just to pray. Uh -uh. We're talking about effectual, fervent prayer that gets results, prayer that gets answers. Jesus said the Pharisees look like they got it together. They look like they got it going on. But he says, I tell you the truth. That's the only reward they're getting for somebody to say, man, prayer warrior. Ooh, they deep. Ooh, they went in. They tore it up. That's all you're getting. You're doing that to be seen. That's all you're really getting. You're really not affecting. You're not moving nothing in heaven and in earth. You're just talking. And it sounds great. Sound real deep. Sound real wonderful. Jesus came to give this insight to say, hey, look, let me show you how to really do it. Let me show you what this is really about. Let me show you how to really do this thing. So you can have a real impact and a real effect. So I ain't trying to walk around deep and can't get no results. 
ain't really getting no answer, but satisfied with really not getting an answer. Because, you know, as long as you can look deep in front of the people and manipulate your way, they were having to manipulate their way. They didn't have no pool with God. They didn't have no relationship with God. So they're having to try to force people, glory to God. You're trying to force stuff around you because there's no trust. There's no intimacy. There's no real effect in prayer. The effect in prayer, it comes from relationship, faith, and trust. This is why he said, don't do that. He talked about going into your private room, talking to who? The Father, your relationship. He said, this is how you can really get results. This is how you're going to get reward. This is how you're going to get an actual answer. Because we need actual answers. When I pray, if I'm in relationship with somebody, if I'm presenting a need, okay, I need it to really happen. I'm not just telling you just to get it off my chest. If I need my rent paid, if I, you know, am seeking a new house, if I need counsel, I need wisdom, I'm not just throwing that out there. You know, if we're in relationship and you can help, hey, there's expectation. Look, I need to be getting something back. Hallelujah. And then he talked about don't heap up phrases. We're talking about prayer that gets results. Prayer, real intimacy. This is why uh, co-pilot just put up there that, that intimacy fosters faith. Because it's not just you're off somewhere trying to pray, trying to make something happen with no, it's, it's intimacy. It's the relationship that strengthens your faith. It's the intimacy that strengthens your faith. You know, we talk often. There's this divine exchange. Are you cooler or more confident with somebody you talk to, you know, once every couple of years? Or somebody, we talk daily. That's my dude. That's my bro. That's my sis. That's, that's oh yeah, that's my best. That's my BFF. We talk all the time. We talk daily. Or if that relationship is there because some of us, you know, there's that mutual understanding. Okay, we don't necessarily talk every day, but when we talk, it's like we lost no time. There's an intimacy. There's an understanding. There are people who I might not talk to every day, but when I do talk, it's like, it's like you know, we ain't talked in a couple of months, but we pick up where we left off. Because there's that intimacy. There's that fellowship. There's that, you know, that exchange. The grounds, relationship, the grounds for exchange. We're going to continue, Lord willing, on Wednesday. Hallelujah. We're, we're, we're building the momentum. This is what this is about. This is what this is about. The effect of your life, the anchoring of your life, so that we're not appearing one way. This is what this is, was all about. The Pharisees appeared one way. We don't want to appear one way, but in, inside, such insecurity, such fear, such struggle, such heaviness, such depression, such anxiety. It, it, this stuff is real. This stuff is real. It's the relationship that's going to anchor you, a living relationship, because he is the counselor. Some of you need some counsel, you need some psychotherapy. We have been through some stuff. It needs to be living. Because sometimes we're going through stuff in the natural and we're getting some help, but you know, we might not have the money. They charge you $125 a session. Like, man, it was helping, but damn, I can't keep that up. I had been in about nine months. It was on point when I was going, though. No, we can have this with God every day. Counselors present, the mighty counselor, your psychotherapist, hallelujah, your coach, your motivator, your, your strengthener, the one who is love. So, again, when you think prayer, just think relationship, intimacy communication, sincere, sincere, sincere communication. He's not looking for the multiplication of words or the deep theological, most holy potentate. If that's not how you talk, that that's not, you know, you're not being sincere. Most excellent potentate, creator of the ends of the earth. If that's not how you talk, and if you don't really know that of him, you got to be honest. This is why he said you can go in private. <laughs> There's some conversations you can have in private and just be real. I'm not talking about being dishonoring to God. I'm not talking about treating him like he's, you know, 
but you can be honest with him as your father. This is what it's about. Amen. I contact. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, relationship, come on, this is what it's about. Jesus loves you and he died. He died for you. He died for you. He died to redeem you. He died so you wouldn't be lost. He prayed in John, Father, I want them to be with me where I am. Now, this is God. This is Jesus communing and talking with his, with his heavenly father, sharing. And he says, Father, I desire that they be with me where I am. He desires to be with us. He desires to be with you. He loves you. He wants relationship. You can enter into relationship by confessing your sin. Sin causes separation. Sin gets in the way. That can be removed today. Sin causes separation. By confession and by repentance, we can be restored into what? Right relationship, right fellowship with God. He's already provided the way. He's already done the work. We just accept what Jesus has done today. Accept him as Lord. Accept him as Savior. And begin this wonderful communication. Begin that fellowship. We just pray, Father, God, Father, I come to you today. I do admit that I have sinned before you. I admit that I've missed the mark. I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. Forgive me for everything I've done against you. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior today. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. Help me to live for you. Fill me with your spirit. Thank you that your blood washes away all of my sins. I accept it today and I thank you and I will follow you in Jesus' name. It's just that simple to get back in right relationship, right fellowship. Now this communication, now this communion, where we say last week, repent and be restored. Repent and be restored. He loves you so much. There's no other place for you. There's no place for you outside of God. No one can love you like he can. No one knows you like he knows you. No one can feel you like he can feel you. No one can satisfy you like he can satisfy you. No one. He created you. No one knows you like he knows you. Hallelujah. So if you prayed that prayer maybe for the first time, you know, let us know. Let us know. Heaven is rejoicing. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. When you commit, when you recommit, when you dedicate, when, you, when the prodigal came home, rejoicing and party. If you've been with God, got away from him and you're coming back, there's rejoicing. If you've never really known him like that and you're saying, God, I'm here, I'm coming. There's rejoicing. God is happy. Relationship. Relationship. This is what it's all about. Amen. Now, listen, we want to give you an opportunity as well to sow your seed, to sow your seeds. Hallelujah. People of God, our family members, come on now, get those tithes in. Get those tithes in. Don't sleep on the tithe. Don't sleep on the offering. Hallelujah. We got kingdom to build. We got property and, and grounds and lands to overtake. Hallelujah. For the kingdom of God. We got to get on with this thing. Praise God. So again, nothing too big. Nothing too small. We're given via the cash app, dollar sign, A-W-P-M. Money is a weapon in the hands of the righteous. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare. Bible says they're not carnal. The weapon of wealth is a weapon in the hands of the righteous. When your heart is surrendered and submitted to God, hallelujah, he wants to be able to funnel some things through you. Hallelujah. And the way, again, what we talked about, exchange and sharing. Hallelujah. We get in divine flow. There's an exchange from heaven to earth. Hallelujah. What we do here, what we do on the earth, affects things in heaven. This is even what we're talking about with fasting. What we do naturally, you know, affects things in the heavenly realm. So hallelujah. Sow that seed. Sow that seed. Again, nothing too big, nothing too small. But do stretch and put an address on it. Hallelujah. We've been doing this. Uh, we said we've been tithing. I've been tithing since I was like 19. 
18, 19 years old, by myself. When I didn't have a job, I was tithing on unemployment. I was unemployed for two years at one point, tithing on that. I worked at Walgreens, wasn't really making nothing, tithed on that. I was a temp, you know, working in a temp agency. I really was making peanuts, tithing on them peanuts. Come on here. God will bring you up level by level. It's a covenant relationship. It's a covenant. It's a partnership. It's not about the preacher getting your money. It's God. It's bigger than the preacher. It's bigger than the preacher. I got stuff, you know, that I need personally. Hallelujah. I got wife and kids and legacy and destiny and mm -mm, tithing and sowing those seeds. Hallelujah. Giving into the work of God, giving into God's kingdom. Hallelujah. That is the way. And the Bible says, when you give, it shall be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Because the Bible said the God who sees what is done in secret. He sees what's done in secret, good or bad. We're talking about the good, praise God. He sees what you do. He sees what you have. He sees what you're working with. He sees those sacrifices that you're making. And he will honor those who honor him. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> so go ahead and get that in. Now, I do see, um, and thank you all for the love. Praise God. Okay, we got a prayer request. Oh man, okay. Lela la ba suta la ba shanda makala la ba shute redele le do kuzanda. Come on, church. Let's join together. This is perfect. Come on here. This is this is perfect because we said prayer is communication. We're sharing our thoughts and our feelings with the Almighty God. And the woman of God says she's requesting prayer for her nephew in England. Said he suffered a stroke, my God, and has bleeding on the brain. But we know our God is a healer. Hallelujah. We, we share these thoughts and feelings with our Almighty One in the confines of this relationship. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, petitioning you and asking. We're sharing, sharing our thoughts, sharing our heart with you, Father. Hallelujah that there has been a grievous situation that you are well aware of. We pray, Heavenly Father, we ask in Jesus' name for healing. We ask for divine healing. Stop all that bleeding on the brain in Jesus' name. We pray that everything would be made normal in the body. We speak normalcy over her nephew. Everything be made normal in Jesus' name, Father. Bring about normalcy in the name of Jesus. No lasting effects from this stroke, from this attack on the body in Jesus' name. Function be restored. Hallelujah. Whatever was affected, be reversed. Send forth divine healing, angels of healing from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We call him healed. We call him healed. Hallelujah. You are Rapha. You are Jireh. You are the God who heals. Jesus, you're our healer. You didn't even have to be present. You said you sent your word and healed according to our faith. Hallelujah. Be healed. We pray for divine healing, Lord. Divine healing. You get the glory. You get the credit. You get the reverence. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare no bleeding on the brain. No lasting or lingering effects of the stroke in Jesus' name. Body be restored to full function. Body, in the name of Jesus, be restored to full function. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Full function. We decree full function. Full function. Zatu Bahaya. Full function. Full function. That's what you speak over him, woman of God. That's what you declare over him. That's what he's going to have. Full function full recovery, full function, and full recovery. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for a full recovery. Thank you, Father. Oh, to the glory of God, to the glory of God, to the glory of God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. People of God, come on. I, did, I, made, I made good time today. I made good time. Somebody give me a thumb or something. God dog it. Love you all.
<clears throat> Listen, we're on the last week. That's it. Full function. We're getting full function in Jesus' name. Full function, full recovery. Ha! Whew. Oh, may we get the word. Make sure you testify. Let us know. We're rejoicing because we're in relationship with God. And we know it's his will to heal. It's not his will that men should perish. Hallelujah. He wants us to prosper and be in health. That's his word. And be in health. Even as our soul prosper. Health. We call him healthy. Now listen. <clears throat> we got to finish strong, y'all. So again, if, if you done got up and had your pop taught or something this morning, hey, we, you know, we can wink at it. But let's finish strong. Let's, let's recommit um, as much as you can do this week. You know, continue on with the water and the nuts. It's going it gonna to make a difference. The results are going to come. God honors what we do for him. And we're not doing it to make a show. We're not walking around, you know, trying to let everybody know. We're on corporate fasting so some people know, but we're not doing it to be seen as men. Father sees what's done in secret. Just keep it secret this week. Go about your day-to-day -day routine, but just seek to honor him and what you're doing. Spend time listening and ministering to him. Hallelujah. And you'll get what you need in Jesus' name. Lord willing, we'll be back on Wednesday. Got to have my co-pilot back. Hallelujah, my heart, like. But my co-pilot should be back in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, man in the controls, because we want this experience to be better. We thank God. They said the uh, worship was a little bit better. So we're working. We're working and we're tweaking. And if you tuned in, we had a new countdown. We had a new video. Hallelujah. So the woman of God is working. She's working. She's working. So God bless you. We're going to pray out. And we want you to have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Intimacy is all about Jesus. It's all about relationship. Nothing greater we can have. Nothing greater we can have. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> excuse me, Almighty God, we just thank you for another day. Thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for showing us. Father, we ask you to just continue to unfold it. Help us to be in a you know deeper relationship with you. Help us to commune with you. Help us to converse with you. Help us to communicate with you. Help us, Father, that it is a two-way thing. Help us to begin to receive from you. Hear your voice where we can speak, uh, you know, hear and be heard in the name of Jesus. Any type of blockages or hindrances to our relationship with you, Father, let them be removed. Help us really view you as Father. Help us view you as our Heavenly Father. Help us to know you as Father. We just pray over these, your people, over their day, over their week. Heavenly Father, let any plan or work of darkness be divinely intercepted, thwarted, and destroyed. Push back the works of darkness. Oh, God, let your blessing meet us this week. Let there be breakthrough. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be good news in the name of Jesus. Bless this week. Bless this week. In Jesus' mighty name, we decree good news. We decree favor. We decree peace. We decree joy. We decree recovery. We decree restoration over your life in Jesus' name. May every private struggle be turned in Jesus' name. May the foundations, hallelujah, be dug up. Any type of strongholds, may you be released and loose this week. In Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he give you his peace and bless you as you go. In Jesus' mighty name.